Mixed news from the housing market. Sales jump unexpectedly, but prices fall to their lowest level in about nine years. Who else to break it all down for us than CNBC's Diana Olick, who joins us from Washington with more on the health of housing in America. Diana. Well, Melissa, existing home sales did a bit better than expected, but it was all thanks to foreclosures, short sales, and big investor activity. Take a look. Distressed sales made up 37% of January home sales. That's the highest in over a year. Many of them, of course, using all cash. 32% of all sales were all cash. Cash is usually about 10%, and investors made up 23% of buyers. Again, very high, especially as first time home buyers really dropped out of the market, likely due to a very tough mortgage. Market. Now, there's been a big controversy over the realtors as to how they're counting their sales stats, that they may have, in fact, overstated them due to, quote, benchmarking issues. Well, I asked their chief economist if we should believe any of their stats. Right now, I don't know what the uh, level of revision will be, whether it will be in a single digit or whether it will be in a double digit or whether or not the measurement have been fairly accurate. Uh, but it remains to be seen. Uh, I think what is important is to use a outside data that is non-realtor, non-MLS for a benchmarking process. Now, Yun admits the last time they did benchmark revisions back in 2000, they revised sales lower by 13 percent. But he said there should not be any change to home price data. And again, those prices low in January due to all that investor and all cash activity. We've got a lot more of this coming onto the blog very soon about these benchmarking issues. RealtyCheck.CNBC.com. Trish. Thank you so much, Diana. Well, with existing home sales rising, can we expect a stronger than expected spring selling season? Joining us right now is Sherry Olofsson, attorney at Fowler White Boggs. Also, Susan Walkner, professor of real estate and finance at the Wharton School. Great to see both you guys. Susan, give me your outlook for the coming months. Well, the coming months are going to continue to be bouncing on the bottom with a slide, and that's because we have a bifurcated market, and we have distressed sales driving this market, and they're going to continue to drive it lower. Sherry, you think spring could be good for uh, home sales, right? I think spring's looking good. You know what, Melissa? Here's the thing. The year-over-year -year numbers are no surprise because last year, where can you go from almost zero home sales? The month-over-month -month numbers are showing a very good trend. They're up again this month, but more importantly, they've been up over the last five or six months. So we would expect some strong spring sales. That's a very good thing. The problem here, as Diana pointed out, is who are these sales to? And the answer is investors, distressed buyers, cash buyers. That's a problem because, number one, we're seeing a stronger trend of that increasing, and that translates to decreases in all of our home price values, and also the fact that those homes may eventually end up back on the market again as resales or as rental inventory, because again, investors are not necessarily buying them to live in those themselves. Susan, I, can I the average investor even get the money that they need to go out and buy a home? I mean, is the, is the housing market pretty <clears throat> dependent on investors because they're the ones with the cash? Yeah, the investors are not borrowing. They're out there with all cash deals. And they're aware that we're near bottoms relative to fundamentals. The question is what happens in the spring when the non-distressed sellers are typically a larger share of the market. And I think we're going to see some st uh, stabilization, some stability coming in at that point. Of course, there are a lot of people who cannot take advantage of what still are historically low mortgage rates. And that's the question. But Sherry, I mean, you said it's the bad news that who's in there is the investors, um, you know, the bargain hunters, those sort of people. But that's the market clearing mechanism, isn't it? I mean, this is what we need to clear out the inventory that's been out there. Isn't the next phase the, you know, families that are going out there to buy single family homes? Yeah, Melissa, we'll take whatever we can get, obviously. You know, it's less good than if they were actually new home creations being reflected here. But, you know, on the other hand, we also know that we've got a huge pipeline still of foreclosures and, and short sales and shadow inventory. So the real issue there is not the fact that there are so many investors and distressed property buyers now, but that that's probably going to continue for another year or two. And before, until that clears that out, we're not going to see our own home values go up. You think there's that much left in the pipeline, that there's still a year or two of shadow inventory and foreclosures and stuff in the, in the pipeline? If you look at the number of cases that were probably affected by this robo-signer issue and you look at the timeline, sometimes several hundreds of days in states like Florida and New York for these 
properties to clear the system. It's definitely going to take that long before they get through the foreclosure process onto the market and then actually sold. But we're going to be seeing big price differences in different regions in the United States depending on how impacted they were by the for number of foreclosures. Uh, but Susan, Absolutely. what this suggests to me here is that, in fact, if it's a lot of investors out there, we're going to see a lot of foreclosures, and it's going to take another year, year and a half to get through all this inventory, then prices are not going to go up anytime soon. Well, we may be surprised, and it's absolutely bifurcated by the percentage of distressed sales versus home buyers first time, and it also is very different across the United States. So in those markets where we've already seen stability, we might see surprising upside in the spring as okay. well. It's going to take us a while to get through this, but if mortgage rates stay low, we should see some stability in okay. the spring. Okay, thanks, guys. Good for buyers. All right, ladies, thank you for joining us.